Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 81 of the Karen Knits podcast. My name is Karen and I'm coming to you from South Central Pennsylvania where I live, where I work, where I knit and where I get into other crafting shenanigans. Mostly knitting. Almost all knitting. But we are here today on Saturday, September 25th, 2021 and it's a gorgeous early fall day. It's low 70s, partly cloudy, a little bit of a light breeze. Oh, it's beautiful out. It's so nice out today. So I have a lot of stuff I want to talk about today. I have a finished object. I have a finished object, a second finished object with a little bit of an update on it. And I have a cheeky little cast on. And I have I probably shouldn't have cast on something new, but what you gonna do? So we'll talk about those today and I'll also talk about a few life things and what I've been up to in the last while since I I was sprung from <laughs> isolation on Tuesday. So I've been able to get out and do a few things the last few days, so that's been exciting. For someone who is cooped up for the last, for 10 days or 10 plus days, getting out again was a treat, an absolute treat. So anyway, let's talk about the knitting. We'll talk about that first and then we'll get on to talking about life stuff at the end. Just drinking some juice crystal stuff. Uh, I think it's cherry pomegranate flavored juice crystals. It's good. So first thing is my finished object. It's actually a hoe, but it is a finished object as far as I'm concerned. It's done. These are, or this is my single Madeline sock. This is a pattern by Kate Poe, and it was the Sock Madness 15 round six design. I cast it on back in April, May. I think it was towards the end of April. I don't recall exactly when I cast it on. And I've been working on it off and on, quite a bit off for the last several months and I finally buckled down and got it done. It will remain forever a hoe. I will not be knitting the second sock. It is far too long in the leg to fit my fat leg. And I don't know anyone who it'll fit. And I just don't have the gumption to knit the second one. It's gorgeous. I love this pattern. Look at how pretty that is. Look at all that lace, that lace, um, the leaves and vines. It's just so, so pretty. It was a really nice pattern. You did an afterthought heel. So when I last talked to you, I was almost ready to, to do the toe. I think I only had about 10 rounds to do and I was ready for the toe and I still had to do the heel flap or the, the heel, heel turn. You knit down the leg and then you put in a waist yarn for an afterthought heel and then you continued down the foot and did the toe and then you came back and pulled out the, pulled out the waist yarn and added in the afterthought heel. For me, the shape of the afterthought heel doesn't work. For me, it's it's pointy, and I've got a big square foot. Well, it's a big rect correction. I have a big rectangular foot. Um, my heel is very square. My toes are very square. A little bit tapered, but very square. Um, this heel would not have fit me, but it's a really neat design so that the vine and leaf pattern continues completely in pattern without any break. And the same with the toe. The, the vines continue on through the toe. So it's a really pretty design. 
So what I plan on doing with this, and I think I've talked about this on a few episodes already, is this is going to become a piece of art on my wall. I'm going to make a couple more soft blockers because this one's got all floppy on me. Um, this is just made a do-it-yourself out of a placemat, a heavy or a, a plastic placemat. So I'm going to make a few more and I'm going to put probably like a hole at the top and up on the wall she's going to go. So I'm calling this a finished object because it will remain a single sock and it is, it is just, it's a piece of art. That's as far as this beauty is going. So that's my, my hoe that's a foe. So that's one, one thing I wanted to show you today. The other thing I wanted to show you is I just want to revisit. Ah, I got yarn falling on the floor. Yeah. Anywho, um, I wanted to revisit my Demiakalopa. And when I showed you this last week, all the knitting was done, the buttons were on, the steaking is obviously done. Everything on it was done except this. And I had on order um, gross grain ribbon in a 5 8 inch measure. And it's in a nice kind of silvery gray that matches not badly with the, with the, um, the, the main yarn color. And I had ordered it. They said it would arrive on Saturday. It actually did arrive last Saturday. I was impressed. I ordered it Friday. They said it would be next day delivery. It was here partway through the afternoon. I think it actually arrived while I was filming last week. So I just took a, a needle and some regular sewing thread and I've tacked it down. And so I've tucked in all the the raw edges from the steaking job. It's probably not the prettiest job. It's not the best sewing job. I don't care. But it's done. I'm not sure if I should have carried this down to the bottom and to the top or just on here. Either way. So now Demiakalopa is 100% Oops, rattling the button on the um, the tripod. Sorry about that. So now my Demiakalopa is 100% finished. All the finishing touches are done. All the those little fine details for the finishing are done, and it's 100% ready to go. And waiting till winter time comes so that it's cold enough to wear it. So it's 70, low 70s today. It's far too warm for a nice woolly wool sweater today. But within a few months, this will be ready to go. So I'm really happy with that. It's 100% done. The adding the grass grain ribbon was actually quite quick. I wasn't sure how long it would take. And it stitched down pretty quickly. I watched a few podcasts, got it done. So. That one is 100% finished. All the little fine details are done and I'm so happy with it. So that put me to the point during the week where all my whips except for my um, advent miniature advent mittens, that was the only whip I had. And I'm just not, Right now, I'm just not in love with working on it. I just, I don't have the motivation to work on it. Um, I think part of it is that I'm just not in love with the colors that I'm using on it. And uh, I'm just kind of falling out of love with it right now. So that I'll just, I'm not gonna force myself. I'm not gonna fight it. I'm just going to set it aside and I will hopefully come back to it later. Worst case scenario, I will order a few different skeins of yarn and I'll, I'll do the remainder. I've still got 12 more to go 
13 more to go? 13 more to go. And maybe I'll redo some of the ones that I don't love as, as the, some of the ones in the colors I don't love as much. The pattern shows them in red, white, and I think two shades of gray. And I love the way those look. And mine, I'm using yellows and browns and tans, and I'm just not, I'm honestly just not loving it right now. So I'm just gonna let that sit in hibernation for a little while. I've got fibers on my nose. You will see where they're coming from in just a few minutes. So that is going to go on the back burner for a little while and I will come back to that and I'll most likely I will come back to it at a later date. For now, it's, it's going to go into hibernation mode. So while I was waiting for the shawlography pattern to come out on the 8th of October, which is almost two weeks away, I had to cast on something new. I just, I had to. What else do you do? <laughs> what else do you do when you've got one whip that you've just put into hibernation and nothing else to do? So I have a cheeky new cast on. I'm actually hoping to have it done before shawlography starts. And it's, it's actually quite likely I will have it done because it's knitting up at close to a bulky weight, equivalent to a bulky weight yarn. And this is, let me get my yarn under control as best I can. This is the Sunday cardigan, or the beginnings of the Sunday cardigan by Petite Knit. And I like it. It's, I'm putting it on backwards. Um, this pattern uses two yarns held together. One is, or what I'm using is the, and the yarns on the floor again. Um, one of the yarns I'm using is a bare fingering weight yarn. And the second yarn I'm using, let me put this down for just a moment without making an avalanche. The second one is a worsted weight mohair or mohair blend. This is yarn, uh, this is Katya Ingenua. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's what it is. I showed you this back a while ago. A friend of mine up in Maine had a whole bunch of this mohair yarn that she had been given and she didn't enjoy using it. So she was looking for someone else to give it to. She texted me to see if I might be interested and all she wanted was just for me to cover the postage for her to mail it to me. So I thought I can figure out a way to use it. Not a problem. So she sent me, there was, I think 14 skeins of this and another 11 skeins of another worsted weight mohair, different, different kind. And that was kind of a variegated with blue, green, and purple. But this is kind of a blue, purpley, gray kind of color. In different angles, it looks kind of purple here. Um, as I'm looking at it worked up, it looks more gray, like a bluish gray. But either way, that's, that's the yarn I'm using, a combination of fingering bear yarn and this worsted weight mohair. And together it comes to roughly a, a bulky weight yarn. So this will be a quick knit. I just cast this on, on Tuesday or Wednesday. And I haven't worked on it that much, relatively speaking. So it's a top down cardigan. This first part here up to the red marker is the collar. And what you do with the collar is 
once you've knit the rest, you fold the collar in half. So it'll have a nice thick cushy collar and then you have the body of the cardigan will flare out in this widening um, ribbing pattern for a while and then it transitions to a stockingette pattern once you get below the where well, you separate for the sleeves and then continue working back and forth so it's knit flat so it's knit flat I keep showing it upside down but this is just to give you an idea of what it's looking like so far and I, I like it I think it's going to it's going to be squishy um, and so fluffy and warm the only thing is that is that I have mohair flyaways everywhere <laughs> that's what I was trying to get off my nose before is that I had these little fibers on my face so we'll see once I've finished knitting it whether the flyaways and the fabric whether I like it or I don't like the feel of it if I don't worst case scenario is I will give this away to somebody I'll find somebody that it fits and I will gift it to somebody but for now this is where we're at with it so you continue you knit back and forth get to the sleeve separations pick up some stitches in the underarm and then continue down and stocking at the rest of the way down until you get to the uh, the ribbing at the bottom I will probably make it a little bit longer than the pattern calls for the pattern looks like it's a little bit of a cropped cardigan or it comes to just the brushes the top of the hip or the middle of the hip I will probably extend it down so that it goes a little farther down the hip maybe covers most of my backside we'll see we'll see how the yarn lasts and how the knitting goes but it's knitting fairly quickly I still have a little ways to go before it's time to to separate for the armholes but it's moving along pretty quickly I probably will I'll have a little bit of time this evening to do some more knitting I'll have a little bit of time this afternoon probably and we've got a few things going on this evening but I should be back home by 8 or 8 30 and I'll probably be able to get another hour or two knitting in this evening so it's coming along nicely I am using eight millimeter I can't read this uh, US 11 or eight millimeter needles so they're big fat needles I'm used to 2.25 millimeter or size one for for socks and these are big fat needles the ribbing was done on I think that was a six and a half I think it's six and a half millimeter needles I'd have to double check that but that's the the Sunday cardigan and I'm really enjoying the knit it's it's pretty straightforward it's moving along quite nicely I need to get my yarn that's escaped again maybe I will maybe not there she is so I'm almost done the first skein of the first ball of mohair so I got fluff everywhere <laughs> I don't know well we shall see I've never knit with mohair before we shall see what I think of it once all is said and done I had planned on making the um, like a cloud pattern by Hohi Locatelli with that yarn but I didn't realize that the yarn was a worsted weight I thought it was a lace weight I just assumed that I didn't really look at it that carefully but it's it's a worsted weight her pattern called for a lace weight and I thought it's just not gonna work so I had bought the like a cloud pattern and I'll put, I put it aside and I will be knitting that it's been in my favorites for a long time and I still really do want to to knit that sweater but I'm going to have to wait and either get 
a lace weight mohair or look into maybe an alpaca yarn to combine with another lace weight yarn to, to make that sweater. So that's down the road. I don't know if that'll be one of my next ones or if that'll slide a little farther down my, my, my favorites in my queue. We'll, we shall see. So we'll see how far I get on that sweater in the next week. I should have a regular decent amount of knitting time. We'll see how much I can get done. So this kind of transitions me into life stuff. Um, Monday I go back to back on campus. I was in isolation until Tuesday after testing positive for COVID. I was completely asymptomatic the whole time. Never, never felt at all sick the whole time, which was good. Um, my husband never had any symptoms. He, as soon as we found out I had tested positive, he had gone to work already for the day, the day I had tested. And he didn't come back home until Tuesday. Like the, he didn't come back for the 10 days. He just, he stayed away. Um, cause his health is more compromised than mine as in terms of something that can be a respiratory health problem. So I got sprung from jail on Tuesday. We just had a nice day relaxed in the morning when he got home and hubby had to go to work for a while. I had some online work things that had to get done during the day. And then in the evening we went out for a belated anniversary dinner. We went out for steak. And that's what we had planned on doing on our anniversary on the 10th, which was when I had um, gone for my COVID test and, and failed the test. <laughs> so we never made it up for our anniversary dinner on our anniversary. So we we got to doing that on the sec or on this past t this Tuesday this week. So Monday I'm back to work. Monday, so I still haven't had my hand surgery. I continue to knit. It's still bothering me both both my thumb and my index finger on the left hand. So my surgery is now rescheduled for October 6th is when we're scheduled. I have to go in on the 1st for another COVID test. I don't know what happens if I test positive again. And several people I've talked to said that once you test positive, you remain testing positive. <laughs> that was the stupid little car. <laughs> My goodness. Um, but a lot of people have told me that once you test positive, initially you continue to test positive for up to 90 days after your first, your first positive test. So I don't know what happens for my surgery if I test positive again. I don't have to quarantine or isolate a second time if I test if I test positive again on Friday. I don't have to isolate again because I've gone through the the stage where I'm potentially contagious or I'm beyond, by then I will be a, I will be beyond the contagious stage. So I don't know what happens. Um, I do have an appointment on Monday morning to go to the surgical office or the orthopedic surgeon's office. And I will be seeing one of the surgeon's assistants who will go through with me and will go through the, um, the consent paperwork. Um, because when you have this any kind of surgery, you have to go through with this consultation and discussion for um, for your consent within 30 days prior to surgery. When I went in for that in the end of August, those 30 days are up now. So I have to go back in again, pay my copay again, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, so I have to go in on Monday morning to get that done. So I will be asking the guy I see on Monday, what happens if I test positive again? Is that going to mess me up or not? So hopefully he's able to answer that for me. 
And the other thing I want to check is that I am going to be out of town Thursday afternoon, all day Friday and Saturday morning. And they want me to test on Friday. So I will check with them to see if they will allow me to come in and test on Thursday early afternoon before the hubby and I go out of town for a couple days. This is for a conference for him work-wise and I'm tagging along because it can connect with some of the things that I do as well. So if they will let me test on Thursday early afternoon then I'll be out of town for a couple days. If I have to test on Friday then I will have to skip the conference. The hubby will go by himself and I will go in and get tested on Friday and then just do my own work from home the rest of the day Friday. So I'm crossing my fingers that I'll be able to get the test done on the, fr the Thursday before we leave. It's about a two hour drive from our place to where the conference is being held and we'd like to go and check into the hotel before we go to the conference center to get our registration and check in done at the conference at four o'clock so we're wanting to leave here leave home around one o'clock so we can get to the hotel get settled in there and then drive to the conference location and get settled in there for the evening sessions the, like the dinner and the evening sessions and things for the conference so we shall see Hopefully, I can get the test done on Thursday. Hopefully, it comes back negative and I get my surgery on the 6th. Here's hoping. Or at least, if I test negative, hopefully I can still get the surgery done on the 6th. But I will find out when I talk to my surgeon's assistant or nurse or whatever I don't know what his title is. I can't remember what his title is um, I'll have to talk to him and find out so we shall see and otherwise what else is new I think that might be about it a cheeky little cast on I'll keep working on that this week coming up although I am back to work um, back to the office this week after my isolation and I stayed home for a few days afterwards but I think that's about it so stay tuned next week and see how much progress I make on my sweater I'm also considering maybe dyeing a Halloween themed sock yarn and make myself a pair of Halloween themed socks maybe get started on those because while I'm away at this conference I'd like to have something small and easier to work on than a sweater because by the time I'm getting to that point the sweater's going to be getting by the weekend the sweater's going to be getting quite a bit bigger and bulkier so I kind of wouldn't mind being able to have a pair of socks to work on so something small so I'm thinking I might I might cast on those socks or I might dye a skein of yarn later today and then get started on on working on those so I have it to work on while I'm away for the weekend. I will be home in time next Saturday to film my podcast and get an episode up next week so you will get to see if I did get the yarn dyed and if I did get started on a pair of socks. They will be just a pair of um, shorty vanilla socks or sort of shorty socks. I like my legs about three inches long or so, three or four inches long. So stay tuned next week and see where I've progressed with that and where where I'm at. But I think that's about all. I think it's a good place to let you go. I didn't have anything else marked down that I wanted to to talk about. I don't think there was anything else. So I will let you go. Take care and I will see you guys in a week. Bye now.